Hey guys, a very good day to you all. In this video, first of all, we will understand the law of mass action, which is mandatory to help us understand what is equilibrium constant Kc as well as the equilibrium constant Kp. Then we will see the relationship between Kc and Kp, the two different equilibrium constants. And then guys, we will move on to understand the characteristics of equilibrium constant. And finally, we will understand the uses of equilibrium constant. Now to those students who are new to our channel, let me tell you that in my previous video, I have explained what is chemical equilibrium and many basic terms related to chemical equilibrium. I strongly recommend you all to watch my previous video, which will help you all to understand this video in a much better manner. The link of that video is given in the description box below or you can simply click on this i button over here. Now to understand the law of mass action, let us move on to my book. Now to understand this law of mass action, let us consider a equation over here. Let's say any substance A is going to react with another substance, let's say B and it is going to give us the products and let us say that small a and small b are nothing but the stoichiometric coefficients now guys if you don't know what is stoichiometric coefficients then don't worry guys i have already made a separate video on that the link of that video is given in the description box below or you can simply click on this i button which is there on the right top corner of your screen now if i had to tell you all in short what is stoichiometric coefficient so for that let me consider one example let's say 2co reacts with o2 to give us 2co2 now this 2 and 1 are nothing but the stoichiometric coefficients now we, this 2 is nothing but the stoichiometric coefficient of a product. Here we are not considering the stoichiometric coefficient of product because law of mass action has nothing to do with products. It only deals with the reactants. So which, who are the reactants over here? The reactants are nothing but A and B. I hope you all know this much. Now let us see what is actually law of mass action trying to tell us. Now here there is no need for you to memorize this law. Instead, I am going to tell you all what is the meaning of this law which will ultimately help you all to remember it in your examination. So first of all, let's divide it into parts. The rate of chemical reaction. So let us write over here. The rate of chemical reaction. is directly proportional and i know, hope you all know how we represent directly proportional by this alpha sign is directly proportional to what it is directly proportional to what product of active masses of reactants okay so let me write over here first let's say that the active mass of this reactant A is represented like this by two square brackets. Now what is active mass? This active mass is nothing but another term for molar concentration. Now if you don't know what is molar concentration guys then don't worry I have already made a video on this. You can find the link of this video in the description box or you can simply click on this i button again. Okay now what does this law say? says is directly proportional to product of active mass product of active mass of reactants. Can you see over here the active mass of A is this one and the active mass of B is this one. So can I say that you are multiplying the active masses that is what is the meaning of 
product of active masses of reactants and then ahead with active mass of each reactant active mass of each reactant raised to stoichiometric coefficient what is the stoichiometric coefficient of reactant a it is nothing but small a what is the stoichiometric coefficient of the reactant b it is nothing but small b so this is what is your law of mass action now i know that many of you have not understood what is the meaning of this so i am going to explain you all once again the rate of chemical reaction the rate of any chemical reaction is directly proportional therefore i have written alpha sign is directly proportional to it is directly proportional to what the product of active masses of reactants the product of active masses let's say that the active mass of a is represented by bracket square brackets okay the active mass of a is let's say this much and the active mass of b reactant b is nothing but this much so it is nothing but the product of active masses of reactants that's what a and b are nothing but reactants with the active mass of each each reactant the active mass of each reactant raised to stoichiometric coefficient now what is the uh, stoichiometric coefficient of reactant a it is nothing but small a the stoichiometric coefficient of reactant b is nothing but small b so we just simply have to what we have to do we have to take the active mass and we have to take the coefficient and make it raised to and then you have to simply take the product and with the help of this you can get the rate of a chemical reaction now you might be wondering what is this term rate of chemical reaction this term rate of chemical reaction just simply tells us how quickly these reactants a and b are going to turn into products so with the help of rate of chemical reaction you can find out how fast is the change happening in the reactants to products now this rate of chemical reaction completely depends on the reactants and not on the products therefore as i mentioned earlier we are not going to take the stoichiometric coefficients of products because the law of mass action has nothing to do with products it is completely dependent on the reactants now if you want to remove this proportionality sign and replace it with the equal to sign as we all know then we have to add a constant over here so can i say rate is equals to i'm just writing in short rate okay so rate is equals to is equals to i have to replace it with a constant okay is equals to k into a raised to small a and b raised to small b okay now this is the final equation that we get from law of mass action so if you want to find out the rate of a chemical reaction then this is the formula to find out its rate now what is this k over here this k is nothing but a constant which is called as the rate constant so i hope guys that you have understood everything from start till here regarding to law of mass action and guys let me tell you all one thing that the law of mass action is only applicable for balanced chemical equation this is a important point guys if you want to apply the law of mass action to any chemical reaction then you can apply it only when the reaction is balanced you cannot apply the law of mass action to a unbalanced equation because if you apply it to unbalanced equation then the stoichiometric coefficients are going to vary now don't get confused between this a and this a this is nothing but as mentioned earlier the molar concentration 
this is how you represent the molar concentration of the reactant a and this is how you represent the molar concentration of reactant b okay now to test whether you have understood up till here let us write the rate of this reaction so can i say that this rate is nothing but going to equals to k this k is going to be there k into the molar concentration of co am i right and we have to take the product of both of them raised to the coefficient 2 hmm? then the molar concentration of o2 add raised to 1 this is how we can find the, the rate of this reaction as well now i would like to mention one point over here let's say you want to find out the rate of chemical reaction at two seconds so suppose if you want to find out the rate of chemical reaction at two second then you have to consider the molar concentration of a and b at two seconds you cannot consider the molar concentrations before the reaction has started you cannot consider the concentration of a and b which was at zero seconds if you want to calculate the rate of chemical reaction at two seconds then you have to consider the molar concentration at two seconds only you cannot consider the concentration at some other different time okay now if you have understood up till here then understanding the equilibrium constant is going to be quite simple for you now this equilibrium constant can only be found out when there is a chemical equilibrium established and to get a chemical equilibrium we require a reversible reaction so therefore let us consider a reversible equation over here where the substances a and b are reacting reversibly to form c and d so here a plus a and b are reactants and c and d are products so initially as we all know in a reversible reaction the reactants turn into products and the products also turn back into reactants this all concept i have explained in my previous video therefore in the starting of the video i recommended you all to watch that video okay now let us say that the stoichiometric coefficients are small a small b small c and small d respectively now here we need to consider a forward reaction now what is a forward reaction a forward reaction is a reaction where the reactants get converted into products okay so we are just considering the first arrow where the reactants are getting converted into products and this reaction is called as a forward reaction now let's say you want to find out the rate of forward reaction so how are you going to find out the rate of forward reaction it is nothing but k let's say this k is k1 into the molar concentration of a here a is the reactant right the reacting substances are a and b a raised to the stoichiometric coefficient small a into the molar concentration of b raised to the stoichiometric coefficient b so this is how you can find out the rate of a forward reaction similarly if you consider a backward reaction over here or a reverse reaction so now what is a reverse reaction reverse reaction is a reaction where the products turn back into products sorry the products turn back into reactants so c plus a now guys here who are reacting here c and d is reacting with each other to give back a and b am i right so the reacting substances over here are c and d so if i want to find out the rate of the reverse reaction then this is how i can find out 
let's say k2 into the molar concentration of c raised to the stoichiometric coefficient small c sorry sorry into d that is the molar concentration of d in raised to the stoichiometric coefficient small d so can i say this becomes your rate of a reverse reaction but as we all know at chemical equilibrium so as we all know at chemical equilibrium the rate of forward reaction is equals to the rate of reverse reaction am i right guys at a chemical equilibrium both the rates will be equals to each other that is the rate of forward reaction will be equals to the rate of reverse reaction so can i say over here that is the rate of forward reaction rf is equals to the rate of reverse reaction rr so if the left hand sides are equal then it is obvious guys that the right hand sides of these two equation will also be equals so just substituting the value of rate of forward reaction as k1 okay is equals to k2 okay now from here guys what i'm going to do is that i am going to take both these constants on one side so uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to shift this term to the right hand side and this term if i shift it to the right hand side is going to go in the new denominator so k1 upon k2 i have shifted this over here is equals to c Okay, guys. Now this is the final equation that we achieve. Now, if you replace this constant, if you replace this constant, let's say by another constant. That is, we are replacing both this constant by a single constant over here. That is, K C is equals to so, guys. this kc this kc becomes your equilibrium constant this can be called as a equilibrium constant as well as a chemical equilibrium constant so guys i hope you have understood that how we actually get a mathematical derivation of an equilibrium constant that is kc now if someone would ask you how you can find out the value of equilibrium constant so simply tell them tell them that kc is nothing but equals to k1 upon k2 we have just replaced this k1 upon k2 by kc okay so this is how we get two formulas for kc that is kc is equals to C molar molar uh, molar concentration of C raised to the stoichiometric coefficients into molar concentration of D raised to stoichiometric coefficients divided by active mass that is a nothing but molar concentration of A raised to stoichiometric coefficient into molar concentration of B raised to stoichiometric coefficient. Or if you know directly the values of K one and K two, you can use this simple formula. So this is what is a equilibrium constant, and this is the mathematical derivation. of an equilibrium constant which can be achieved only at chemical equilibrium and not at any other condition of a chemical equation now guys over here when we are finding the value of an equilibrium constant we are making use of molar concentrations that is nothing but the active masses am i right we are making use of molar concentrations or you can simply call as active mass no problem with that but when the reaction involves gases we can also find out the equilibrium constant kp with the help of the partial pressure of each substance gas that is present and the value of the formula for kp 
remains the same like the KC only instead of molar concentrations we can replace the term with the partial pressures so the partial pressure of C raised to the stoichiometric coefficient then the partial pressure of D raised to the stoichiometric coefficients can you see it this is similar to the KC only CC CDC here we are also we are here in the numerator we had CD and here also in the numerator we have the partial pressure of C and the partial pressure of D here in the numerator we had the molecular concentration of C and molecular concentration of D okay now in the denominator we have the molecular concentrations of A and B so here we are going to have the partial pressures of A and partial pressures of B raised to the stoichiometric coefficients that is small a and small b so this is how you can find out the value of equilibrium constant for the reaction involving gases okay by using the partial pressure of the gas so I hope you have understood the formula of equilibrium constant involving molar concentration and the formula of equilibrium constant involving partial pressures of each gas that is present in a equation so now many of you might be wondering that what is the difference between this kp that is the equilibrium constant and this kc which is also a equilibrium constant so now let us find out the relationship between kp and kc and what is the difference between them okay so for this you all must know what is an ideal gas equation and if i don't know what is an ideal gas equation then i have made a video on that you can find the link in the description box or you can simply click on this i button okay so according to the ideal gas equation let us consider this partial pressure that is partial pressure of a that is nothing but pa so as we all know pa pv is equals to nrt this is our ideal gas equation so pa is equals to narrt now from here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to shift this v to the right hand side so i get the value of pa as n a upon v into rt and guys this n a upon v is nothing but the formula for molar concentration of a so if you would have watched my video on molar concentrations you would have easily got this formula okay so value of your pa becomes now molar concentration of a into rt similarly guys can i say that the value of this pb will become molar concentration of b into rt similarly for pc the value will be molar concentration of c into rt and for pd it will be molar concentration of d into rt now the next step that i'm going to do i'm just going to substitute all this formula in this equation okay so let us see what is the equation of kp that we get substituting this value guys as you can see over here guys that I am just substituting these values see I substituted the value of PC as C into RT and this raised to C okay so I am just substituting this okay now the next job is to simplify this equation so the simplified version of equation that I am going to get is nothing but Kp is equals to this molar concentration raised to C into 
this R T raised to C. Am I right, guys? Again, this molar concentration of D raised to D. Then this R T raised to D. And again, the same applies to the denominator as well. Now, guys, if you observe one thing over here in the numerator, I am having R T R T as common. Okay, so I am just going to simplify this now. so your kp now becomes i'm going to take this c and c separate c and d separate and since rt is common over here i can add the raise to power that is c plus d so now it becomes rt raise to c plus d the same applies to the denominator i'm going to separate this a and b to one side and then i uh, since the base is common rt rt is common therefore the raised to power is going to get added okay now again since the rt and rt numerator denominator is same so can i subtract this a plus b from the numerator c plus t this is the normal math that you guys must be knowing am i right and if you'll observe one thing over here this whole thing is nothing but the formula of kc so i'm just going to substitute it as kc into rt raised to c plus d minus a plus b okay and we can simply write this whole thing as let me show you all delta n so this delta n is nothing but c plus d minus a plus b this is just for the betterment of representation where this c plus d is nothing but the stoich uh, the number of moles of denominator Can you see over this small c and small d is nothing but stoichiometric coefficients, and this a plus b are nothing but stoichiometric coefficients of reactants. Okay, now what is the value of this r? This r is nothing but your gas constant whose value is zero point zero eight two zero six liter atom. Kelvin. Now the value of R is going to vary as its units vary. So in the video of ideal gas equation, I have also explained all the possible values of R. You, I hope you all will watch that video. So guys, this is the final relationship that we get between Kc and Kp. So I hope this math was easier for you all and not tough for you all. So guys after understanding the law of mass action and what is equilibrium constant now it is time for us to understand the characteristics of equilibrium constant so the first characteristic the value of equilibrium constant depends on the temperature which means that if you change the temperature the value of the equilibrium constant is also going to vary then the changes in the concentrations pressure and volume cannot alter the magnitude of equilibrium constant which means that the magnitude of the equilibrium constant is not going to vary with the change in concentration pressure and volume a catalyst does not affect the value of equilibrium constant just like the concentration pressure and volume a catalyst is also not going to affect the value of equilibrium constant the next point the value of kc and kp are generally coated without units 
mind you guys both of them are equilibrium constant only but in kc we are finding the equilibrium constant using the molar conductivity whereas in kp we are finding the equilibrium constant using the partial pressures so both the values are generally quoted without units because the units cancel each other in the numerator and denominator then the next point the form of equilibrium constant expression and the numerical value of equilibrium constant depend on the form of balanced chemical equation now what is the meaning of this let's understand with the help of an example let's say i have a reversible reaction n2o4 2no2 now if you observe one thing over here this equation is balanced we have two nitrogen on the left hand side and we have two nitrogen on the right hand side whereas we have four oxygen on the left hand side and we have four oxygen on the right hand side as well now if i want to find out the kc value of it so what is going to be the kc value the molar concentration of no2 raised to the square divided by n2o4 so i hope you know, you now know how to find out the kc value then if i write this same equation same equation in just a different way of balancing see i write this equation now like this can you see over here now also this equation is balanced how we have uh, one nitrogen on the left hand side whereas on the right hand side we have again one nitrogen we have two oxygens half into four we have two oxygens on the left hand side whereas we have two oxygens on the right hand side as well now now what will be the kc value let's say that we write kc as kc dash over here the kc the equilibrium constant value is now going to change can you see over here the value is different from this one so guys now what i want you all to observe over here is that as you change the method of balancing the equations here we had one and two whereas here we have half and one the equilibrium constant value is also going to vary so now if you read this point again that the form of equilibrium constant expression and the numerical value of equilibrium constant they both depend on the form of balanced chemical equation if you change the way of balancing it is obvious that the equilibrium constant value is also going to vary then the next thing guys here if you observe one thing over here that if you want to find out the relationship between kc and K kc dash this is the relationship that you get that the kc value is nothing but the square of kc dash if you take the square of this you are obviously going to get this so if you take the square of kc dash you are going to get kc so this is how you find out the relationship but it is not necessary that for all equations the relationship will be same it may alter with the change in the equation so i hope guys you have understood this much now let us understand the uses of equilibrium constant okay so we have understood the characteristics and now let us understand the uses of equilibrium constant the first use to calculate the equilibrium concentrations now what is the meaning of this for example let us consider this reaction over here 2so2 plus o2 gives us 2so3 and this is a reversible reaction now here if you want to find out the value of kc so how what is the value of kc so3 raised to the stoichiometric coefficient raised to 2 and in the denominator so2 raised to 2 into o2 okay that is a these all are molar concentrations now suppose let's say that you know the value of molar concentration of so2 you know the value of molar concentration of o2 and you also know the value of kc now since you know these three values and you do not know this fourth value then you can easily find out the molar concentration of so3 why because as we all know that if we have only one unknown in an equation we can easily find out its value so i hope you have understood what i am trying to tell over here if you know or any three values out of here and if you do not know any one value then you can easily find its value similarly if you know as molar concentration of so3 and so2 and you know the kc value then you can easily find out the molar concentration of o2 now guys the next thing the second use is to know the extent of reaction which means that after what condition you are going to get a equilibrium constant let's see over here 
let us consider the same reaction over here and its kc value is going to be this okay now suppose if kc it is the equilibrium constant value is greater than 10 raised to 3 if the kc value is greater than 10 raised to 3 then guys can i say that here the numerator is much more greater than the denominator am i right if the numerator is much more greater than the denominator then only you can get the value as greater than 10 raised to 3 so here guys can i say that the concentration molar concentration of so3 is greater am i right molar concentration of so3 is greater and what is so3 so3 is nothing but a product so here we say that reaction is in favor of products and nearly goes to completion it nearly goes to completion and then we establish a chemi chemical equilibrium therefore we have more concentration of so3 and we have less concentration of so2 and o2 as i mentioned earlier in the last video the concentration may vary the concentration of reactants and concentration of products may be different when the chemical equilibrium is established so i hope guys you, have, you will watch my previous video as well now the next one let's consider the same thing again and here let's say that if the value of kc is less than 10 raised to minus 3 if the value of kc is less than 10 raised to minus 3 then guys can i say over here that the denominator is sorry the numerator sorry guys my bad the numerator the numerator is much more smaller than the denominator so here who is greater the denominator is greater therefore we are going to get the kc value as less than 10 raised to minus 3 and in the denominator we have the molar concentration of so2 and o2 and this so2 and o2 are nothing but the reactants so here we say that concentration of reactants is much more greater and since the concentration of reactants is much more greater then we say that the reaction has not started much which means that the reaction has not happened that's that's the reason that the concentration of reactants is so greater than the products okay we, we can say that the reaction has proceeded only less but here since the concentration of reactants is most that which means that it is greater of the reactants we can say that since the concentration of reactants is greater therefore the reaction has not proceeded much it has only completed very less or you can just say that the uh, reaction is almost equal to not started okay then suppose let's say that now the value of kc if the value of kc ranges between 10 raised to minus 3 and 10 raised to 3 then here we say that significant concentration of both reactants and products is present so guys i hope you have understood the second use that is to know the extent of the reaction and guys the third use is to predict the direction to predict the direction of reaction now what is the meaning of this let us understand let us consider a reaction reversible reaction a a plus b b this is a reversible reaction now at equilibrium as we all know at equilibrium we get the value of an equilibrium constant kc which is nothing but c raised to c into d raised to b into b raised to small b now this is the value of an equilibrium constant that we get when the reaction is at equilibrium but this same ratio this same ratio let me write it once again guys this same ratio is also called as the reaction quotient now what is this reaction quotient 
This reaction quotient is nothing but the ratio of concentrations when the reaction is not at equilibrium. So at equilibrium we have a equilibrium constant and when the reaction is not at equilibrium we have reaction quotient which is nothing but the same ratio. Now what is the use of this reaction quotient? Let's say guys that the value of this reaction quotient is greater than Kc. Okay. So can I say that if we want the reaction which is not at equilibrium to come at equilibrium so can I say here guys that we need to decrease the value of QC. Now how can you decrease this value of QC? By decreasing the numerator and increasing the denominator. So here when you are decreasing the numerator, can I say guys you are decreasing the molar concentration of products. So in short, can I say that you are decreasing the products and you are increasing the numerator which means that you are increasing the molar concentration of reactants. So guys, when the product decreases and the reactant increases, it is obviously an indication of reverse reaction. Okay. So in order to reach the equilibrium, you need to decrease the value of QC. If you want to decrease the value of QC, you need to decrease the numerator and increase the denominator. And when you are decreasing the numerator, you are decreasing the molar concentrations of products and you are increasing the molar concentrations of reactants and when the molar concentration of product decreases and that of a reactants increases can I say it is nothing but a reverse reaction where the products are getting converted into reactants. So with the help of this can we say that the reaction is now from right to left that is products are decreasing and getting converted into reactants therefore the molar concentration of reactants is increasing so this is how it helps to predict the direction of an reaction and let's say that if your value of qc is less than kc and if since the value of qc is less than kc and if you want an equilibrium condition in this reaction then guys can I say that you need to make the value of QC equals to KC now when can you make this value of QC equals to KC by increasing the value of QC because QC is less than KC now if you want to increase the value of QC so guys can I say over here how you can increase the value of QC by increasing the numerator and decreasing the denominator I hope you guys know what is this simple match okay if you increase the numerator and decrease the denominator the value of QC is going to increase and when you are increasing the numerator when you are increasing the numerator can I see guys you are increasing the molar concentrations of products so you are increasing the molar concentration of products Similarly, when you are decreasing the denominator, guys, can I say you are decreasing the molar concentrations of reactants. Am I right? And when the reactants decreases and the products increases, which means that the reactants are getting converted into products, which is nothing but the sign of a forward reaction. So currently we have a forward reaction which is from left to right where the products are increasing and the reactants is decreasing. Therefore we can understand the uh, direction of reaction with the help of this QC. If the QC is less than KC and when it is heading towards equilibrium which means that we want to e make equal QC and KC 
that time we get reverse reaction and when kc is greater than sorry when qc is greater than kc we get forward reaction i hope guys you have understood this concept and now you can easily answer if kc qc is equals to kc which means that it is nothing but an equilibrium condition now we do not need to increase or decrease the value of qc because we have already got the value of qc equals to kc so basically if the kc value is greater we have a reverse reaction in greater velocity that is reverse reaction is dominating and when kc is less the qc is less than kc we have forward reaction that is dominating so guys do check out my channel where i have uploaded physics and chemistry videos they might be helpful for you all and guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such interesting videos thank you for watching this video